environmental care and hygiene in raising bovine livestock. Milk production entails a daily harvest. All our livestock owners started off with the manual process. This meant one person milking each cow in order to completely extract the milk. This process lasted about 10 to 12 minutes per animal, that is, until milking equipment appeared. This equipment is being made now for the past 120 to 130 years, and now the industry is more or less automated in order to make the milking process easier. My name is Ivan Dario Vélez, and I started in milking when I was 14 to 15 years old. I didn't milk that much manually, however, since when I became of age, when I turned 18 or 19, I started to work on these machines. It wasn't for long, though, since soon after, I had to do military service. But once I got back, that's when I dedicated myself fully to this. It's been 13 years now I've been doing this full time. Manually, the routine is very tough. Even though you have to get up early regardless, for you to get an animal to help carry the containers in the rain, that was always something hard, not good. Here, on the other hand, you put on waterproof clothing and bring in the cows. Then here, you just concentrate on milking while you're relaxed and comfortable. A milking system is something very similar to a calf, where you function as a calf when it breastfeeds from the cow, where he creates a vacuum and a massage with his tongue. That is really the way you milk a cow. In order to accomplish that mechanically, we have to count with a vacuum system, a regulation system that keeps the vacuum regulated, milking units, which are those in charge of the extraction, and last but not least, the pulsator. The pulsator is the one that opens and closes the teat cup, that which has contact with the udder in order to do the milk extraction and teat massage. The implementation of milking systems has led to higher levels of productivity, efficiency and hygiene in the process, achieving a higher quality of milk. In Colombia, in the year 2012, Resolution 0017 came out. This resolution manages the system of payment to the producer of raw milk. In other words, this resolution talks about three milk qualities compositional quality, hygienic quality, and sanitary quality. Compositional quality makes reference to fat and protein content and total solids. In other words, the more total solids, more fat, and the more protein milk has, the better the payment for the producer. Hygienic quality makes reference to the number of colony-forming units per milliliter. The lower the number, the more hygienic the milk. By doing a cleaner means of production, the result is a better quality of milk from a hygienic perspective. The quality in Colombia is established by the certificates emitted by the ICA, vaccination certificates free of diseases of foot and mouth disease, brucellosis, and tuberculosis. Today, we're going to focus on getting to know one of these parameters, hygienic quality. This is related to the management of asepsis we have in terms of our milking equipment and the time it takes to remove medications. There are two factors that specially impact the quality of milk. The first is the recount of somatic cells, which informs us about the health we have here on our breeding farm. Spread of disease is directly related to the sanitary control of the cleanliness of the installations, equipment, milking and operational tools to periodically test for mastitis practically before each milking, for using improvised methods with no scientific or technical backing, for not disinfecting the teat after each milking, due to neglect or ignorance on behalf of the operator. 
Environmental care and hygiene in raising bovine livestock. In the milking system, we have gotten to know the three factors one must take into account in order to determine the quality of the milk. Now let's see how we can develop an excellent washing routine for our equipment so as not to affect both the hygiene nor the production in our dairy farms. There are basically five milk components. These are fats, proteins, minerals, lactose, and water. Each one of these components are withdrawn in a process called a washing routine. Each one of these components is withdrawn through a different process. We're talking about lactose removal, an alkaline chloride wash, an acid wash, and that is how our milking unit will remain until our next routine takes place. I'm going to invite you now to watch just how we carry out this washing process and to find out how to remove each one of these milk components. The washing routine must be done with both the external and internal parts of the equipment. In order to carry out the internal wash of the milking systems, we first must count on a recirculation of the products that intervene in this process. That is why it's important to have the system correctly calibrated. The first wash that we carry out with the internal section of the tube of the milking machine is for the lactose removal. No special substance is used for lactose removal, nor does there exist a specific time frame. The way to monitor the removal is through the color of the water. When the water comes out transparent, that means that the removal of lactose and water from our tubes has taken place. The water for the washing does not contain detergent. The ideal temperature for the water is of 32 to 35 degrees Celsius, or lukewarm, so that it may warm up the pipes in our milking machine and that way facilitate the withdrawal of all the fats that may be present in it. For this, we need four elements. The first one is about the quantity of water required for each machine in order to achieve it. Second is the detergent, alkaline chloride. Thirdly, we need the temperature of the water to start the wash to be at 75 degrees Celsius. And lastly, we need turbulence. It is important to clarify that the quantity of water needed to wash these machines is directly related to the milking units contained within our system. Using more water does not guarantee us that there will be a good standard of asepsis for our equipment. The recommended measurement is of 10 liters of water per unit. To manage proper control of water waste while ensuring asepsis of our equipment also contributes to the productivity of the ranch. In the alkaline chloride wash we use water, 10 liters per milking unit, temperature, 75 degrees Celsius, detergent, alkaline chloride, solution, 3 centimeters per liter of water, components to withdraw, fats and proteins. When the water descends to 45 degrees Celsius, we conclude that the alkaline chloride wash has come to an end. The time frame for this is usually of around 6 to 7 minutes. The next step in this washing process is with the acid wash. The quantity of water for this process is of 10 liters per milking unit. Temperature, room, detergent, acid, Solution, one centimeter per one liter of water. Component to withdraw. Minerals. Note, you allow it to recirculate for approximately eight to 10 minutes. 
Before starting the milking routine, it is important to carry out a disinfection process of the equipment in order to remove any excess bacterial load present within it. We now have seen the internal washing of the milking system. Let us now turn our attention to the external part of it. This takes place as soon as the operators have finished with the milking process. We have just finished watching a very good washing routine. Each time, it has to be done in the same way, as its name states. It's a routine, always the same. Nothing has to change as long as it's working in delivering a safe product. If we deliver a good quality product, we get a better price and the processing plant will have more milk with which to do its processes. Environmental care and hygiene in raising bovine livestock. In today's world, there are many different environmental problems which are raising some companies' awareness, pushing them to opt for new alternatives that promote environmental care. One of these options is for cleaner production of bovine livestock, which consists on improving the management of natural resources alongside soil recovery, the efficient use of water, energy and residual materials. These strategies contribute to the improvement and protection of livestock's agro-ecosystems. We specially want to work on the recovery of the environment from damage due to livestock, since we know that it has been very extractive to raise livestock traditionally, as well as predatory, uses agrochemicals, and is one of the main causes of deforestation. We must make certain decisions that can lead us to raising livestock in a more acceptable way. We are producing a food for human beings and we want it clean when it reaches them, produced in an environment that is healthy and that really accomplishes what it has committed to, that is, to nourish humanity in a healthy way. That's what's essential with this kind of production, and I believe that's the objective we have set in this farm. Within the activities that must be applied in order to ensure that the system functions properly are the elimination of agrochemicals, to benefit from as well as protect resources, generate well-being for the animals, ensure the health and safety of the operators and of the consumer. This cleaner system of production can be implemented on any type of ground, weather and livestock. On this operation, we manage water as a protected resource, protecting marshes, protecting riverbeds, and keeping animals from entering water sources or marshes. Instead, water is guided through pipes toward troughs where the animals drink clean water. Water is a fundamental resource for sustainable production. Without water, there is no production of life. The proper management of it on livestock farms is a commitment we all must make. Next, we will learn why taking care of the ground is also an important part of this system. The soil is where a great quantity of the food we need is found. We would like to have soil that is healthy, soil that is alive, and that responds to the nutritional needs of the food we are delivering. The work we are currently doing is on controlling weeds, or a regeneration of plants, if you will, plants you live with when raising livestock. We cut and prune them after the animals have left the paddock, leaving behind the residue. The residue is left behind as a topsoil with the intention of supplying those nutrients to the ground and keeping it covered in order to protect it from the sun's rays as well as from the impact of heavy rain, 
which are very strong in this tropical climate. In order to produce a cleaner way of raising livestock, we must take advantage of residues, which is an important resource. All these residues come to this place and here, with the help of water, molasses and rice or wheat bran, we make compost and allow for fermentation. This fermentation, this compost, is part of the fruit tree's fertility. These are also managed in a clean way, allowing for the balance of insects and other microorganisms. We are left with a fruit that is healthy, nutritious, and tasty. Environmental care and hygiene in raising bovine livestock. The most important human resource when raising livestock in a more sustainable way is based on having a good direction. The livestock owner must commit himself to developing his livestock ranch into an environmentally friendly culture that is committed to the operators as well as committed to the final consumer. Training is a necessity for those business owners that wish to improve or implement new technologies or projects in raising their livestock. After all, you have to keep in mind that it's the workers who are in charge of carrying out all the activities necessary in reaching the established goals. They must also be trained, specially motivated for their responsibility in developing this product, accepting and giving out suggestions that are a result of their observation and reading. We must motivate them to share the experiences they've had in other jobs they may have had. The benefits we can obtain by implementing cleaner ways of raising cattle are countless. These include protecting watersheds, protecting the health of both operators and consumers, taking advantage of energy and residues, allowing for biodiversity to act in favor of the system, and lastly, we can't forget about the soil, which is a heritage that belongs to all mankind. We have exchanged herbicides for Colombian manpower, giving jobs to our neighbors. And so we have exchanged the cost of herbicidal agents, worsening health of our operators and deterioration of the soil, which is our heritage, for a workforce, for the well-being of the operators and of the soil, and finally, for the quality of the product. We have seen that the animal is also benefited. Nutritionally, by receiving a healthy plant that has come from a healthy ground. That is what's nourishing the animal. A healthy plant is presented when it can take nutrients from the soil that are necessary for its formation. Those nutrients, that nutrition that comes from the soil, since this is a clean production, are then transmitted to the animal, from the plant to the animal, and thus to the human being as well. The animal receives other benefits, making sure to have shade, clean water, and that the animal is properly fed, fighting illness, not being attacked by all sorts of illnesses. It's been 14 years since the last time we had to apply a tick or mosquito bath. We haven't had any problems. Why? Because the animal is receiving proper nutrition.
My invitation for beef and milk producers is so they can develop and accept raising livestock in this manner for their own productions. A cleaner production allows for an improved relationship with work personnel thanks to a renewed and almost complete or complete trust that is established. A beef and milk producer's commitment should be environmental and social. Included in the social aspect are the families tied to the livestock. These include our own families, as well as all the future generations, be they human or organic, animals or vegetables. And so I believe this is quite a beautiful and big commitment, one which we can help develop, a production that is truly friendly with the environment. Livestock owners that produce beef and milk are able to implement cleaner production strategies in their businesses by becoming aware on how to care for the environment, by assuming their responsibility with the consumer by offering very high quality products, and also by forming work teams that are trained and motivated in undertaking the tasks needed for the enterprise. This is how, by working together, this system can also be profitable.